What are some myths about sex that just annoy you? Someone once told me if the recipient of anal sex farts, the fart gas will travel through the urethra and the pressure will make the balls explode. This is the content I come to Reddit for. That his lack of a boner means he isn't turned on you're not pretty. I get it guys. It just doesn't happen sometimes. We can still make out. Stress fatigue being distracted by too many thoughts could all be factors. It sounds stupid. But sometimes being too hot, temperature wise, can affect it too. That missionary is vanilla or boring. I've had plenty of sex. Missionary is by far my favorite. There are so many varieties of the position you can smoothly glide into mid-sex without it being clunky and awkward like with other positions. It is intimate, personal and sexy as fuck. You can regulate speed and depth more easily than other positions too. What a great position. I blame people who think sex should be like porn. What's fun to watch is not the same as what's fun to do. That there are dozens of horny and neglected milfs in my neighborhood just waiting to get it on with me. The first part is probably true. The second part not so much. That erectile dysfunction only happens to old broken men and that when it happens it's over for you. It's more common than most people think and in today's stressful times can happen to anybody. The manhood ending myth of it usually makes the issue worse than it originally is. Yeah my husband has had this issue since way before we met. He has a big workplace stress issue and it's difficult for him to shut his anxiety off. For the first few years I thought it was my fault. But it has improved a lot in the past few years. But at the time the feeling of inadequacy on his part made the issue way worse. That she can't get pregnant if she's on total mayo some people actually believe that. I've met some weebs who thought Japanese women were closeted sluts who'd throw themselves at any non-Japanese man. Imagine their surprise when they went to Japan and realized they were treated as little more than distractions. When your only exposure to Japanese culture is through hentai. That hymen represents the virginity or purity of a girl. That you put the balls in. Can do. There's a bangbrous video of a guy who puts both balls in. Then pulls them out one at a time with an audible pop. Pop sound. He then shouts booyah. That your first time is something magical instead of the fucking dumpster fire that actually is. The first time I had sex I lasted maybe 5 pumps. The girl I was seeing at the time knew I was a virgin. Knew I would pop quick. And told me to go for it anyway. No regrets but also nothing magical. Having a large penis makes you good at sex. I especially hate that one. Those are the people that think size is everything. And it's just dumb. No points in having something big if you don't know how to use it. That you can't get pregnant when it's your first time. I heard that one a lot. When I was a wee lad. One girl at my school found out that myth the wrong way. That men are always ready to have sex at the drop of a hat. Sometimes I'm just tired and not in the mood. I was on Live Ill for a while in 2020 and it annihilated my sex drive. Then on the rare occasions I could get it up it took absolutely ages to come. The orgasm was always shit as well. Like a little whimper. My wife. Who is wonderful and understanding etc. Initially freaked out specifically because of the men are always good to go messaging. It. Is. Everywhere. Edit. Lustral. Not Livial. Mixed up the various meds in my house. Masturbation leads to blindness. Well. If you shoot in the eyes it does lol. That after a man comes in you. You can just get up out of bed and go about your day. No. Come leaks out everywhere. If you don't want it all over your bed and sheets you have to immediately grab a towel or washcloth as soon as he pulls out to stop it from getting everywhere. Then you have to squeeze the rest of it out because if you don't it squelches out into your underwear clothes to surprise you later. So many movies and books where there is absolutely no condom mentioned just ignore this very messy, awkward part. I can't believe this isn't higher up. The movies and books where they bang finish and cuddle naked like there isn't a massive cum or wet spot between them and as a woman the feeling of it trickling out and just laying there letting it leak i can't that women get loose if they have a lot of sex just doesn't happen someone brought in a rubber band becoming loose after numerous stretches as an example to me once lol if only vaginas were made of flesh that can heal and loosen itself and not rubber that doesn't heal and doesn't adjust itself during and after sex that going all night long is a requirement to being good in bed. I got work tomorrow baby. The only thing I can do all night long is sleep and I'm not even good at that. Maybe not quite. 
but the myth that men think about sex every two minutes or whatever the fuck. It is the most absurd thing I've ever heard and yet I find so many people who genuinely believe it. Ironically, I have a good friend and she admitted that she thinks about weird shit like that on a daily basis. In public. Whatever. Nothing wrong with it. Just ironic. Pretty sure most men are busy thinking how they'll fight off a knife-wielding goon. Edit. Some interesting insights into the minds of my fellow dudes. Loving the replies to this. Purling out isn't always safe. Bodily fluids exchanged before ejaculation can result in pregnancy. Edit. Isn't always safe. I'm glad pulling out has worked for you guys. But my point is that it doesn't completely avoid pregnancy. There's a fair amount of chance of pregnancy and getting STDs even if you pull out. Edit. Source. HTTPS colon slash slash. WWW. Medical News Today. Com articles slash 325,356. Another source. HTTPS colon slash slash. WWW. Healthline. Com health healthy sex can you get pregnant from precom what if you're not ovulating? Edit. Pulling out is nowhere near as effective as a condom. Using a condom is 98% effective whereas pulling out is 78% which is a significant difference. My friend found this out in September. She's due in June lol. That men always have higher libidos than women. Mine has been higher than all of my boyfriends and I'm very self-conscious about it in part because of all of the cultural messages that women aren't supposed to have strong libidos. I imagine that men probably do have higher libidos on average but there's so much individual variation that it really shouldn't be shocking that some women do have higher libidos than some men. My sister broke up with one of her boyfriends when she was much younger specifically because his libido was so much lower than hers. That it's easy for women to orgasm through penetration alone. It's not. Yes. There might be some lucky ladies who can do it without much effort. But most of us need a little extra help. So don't feel bad if you can't do it. Same goes for the partner. Right? It annoys me that in the movies women seem to always come after three thrusts. Face with tears of joy. Shower sex is overrated. It's not even good. The water makes everything drier. Also beach sex. It's only romantic before it begins. That people have sex for hours. After about 20 minutes I'm exhausted. People must be training for marathons or something and never told me. Having sex for hours doesn't mean you penetrate her like a railgun. It just mean you do other things like oral or touching things. That women who have lots of sex get loose. The weirdest one is that sex with multiple partners makes them loose. Whereas repeated sex with one partner after marriage somehow doesn't. Erection equals consent. No. Rapists. It does not. That the pullout method is 100% reliable. 100% sure someone reading this is a pullout baby. That one's asshole is always ready for sex. As a big guy it is frustrating meeting a top who doesn't realize that spontaneous sex doesn't work for most bottoms. As a woman who has had a dick excruciatingly jammed into my absolutely 100% bone dry unready asshole. This. The pain is unreal and it is not sexy. That good sex equals orgasm. Good sex is in the mind. Taking yourself and someone else to a higher plane of existence through mutual enjoyment and self-release. The possibilities are endless. That I would have it. Once I grow up. Deleted. I've never done it. But I notice that I often have to pee after orgasm. Even if I went before having sex. It's like my bladder refills within minutes. I wonder if that has something to do with it. That men are just wired to fuck and can't resist sexual advances. Boners means they just want to fuck now. Men want cuddles too. The penis gets hard sometimes to regulate excess blood flow during high heartbeat scenarios. Me. Gets stressed in public. My body. Hey I want a boner. Me. No please god no. My body. Have a boner. That my mate is supposed to lay eggs and then I fertilize them and guard them while she lays eggs for some other male. Yeah guarding eggs is bullshit. That having sex once a month is bad. My wife and I are tired after work and we get horny at weird times. When the stars align, usually once a month, we have fantastic mind blowing sex. We joke that we should do it more often, but never do. That's fine with us. The session is enough to last a month. Edit, if we're lucky. It happens three times a month. Edit 2, quality over quantity. It's really quite simple. If it works for both people there's no issue. 
It's the mismatch in needs expectations that causes the problems. Myth number 6. HIV can be transmitted through any bodily fluids. Truth. HIV is transmitted through four bodily fluids which are semen, blood, breast milk, vaginal secretions, and is not transmitted through any other bodily fluids like urine, saliva, tears, etc. Worth noting, though significantly lower risk than the others, urine is still not completely safe, as having very small amounts of blood in one's urine is not as uncommon as people would think. Besides how people say men can't be raped, which is bullshit. I think my least favorite myth is that if a man is hard, he wants sex, or is doing it on purpose, we literally can't control them at all. Piggybacking on this, I really hate it when we read stories about female teachers taking advantage of male students and seeing so many comments like he should have kept his mouth shut and enjoyed it or where were these teachers when I was growing up. In the movies, it looks like women have sex and just roll over and go to sleep. I'm sorry but if you don't pee or clean that shit out afterwards, you're going to get a UT. Plus cuddling. I'm not a huge cuddler because I hate cluing myself to my so with sex sweat but cuddling is nice. That porn is like real life. Men always are up for it. Size matters. Half true. That porn is like real life. You mean to tell me you've never heard of someone getting railed from behind while their head is stuck in the washing machine? If you have sex you will get chlamydia and die. Don't have sex standing up. Don't have sex in the missionary position. Just, don't do it. That it always hurts the first time. Ladies, if it hurts you all either went too fast or you are otherwise tense. Nerves. Vaginismus. Many reasons. If it hurts, take a break slow down even call it quits don't hurt yourself or your partner. That the most common position in lesbian sex is scissoring. Like I can't even get into that position without pulling a muscle. But porn said that all lesbians scissor and also always have very long stiletto acrylics. That drinking semen doesn't keep your skin beautiful. My wife does have incredible looking skin. That only piv is real sex and any other sexual act is something lesser. That you need to come to enjoy it. Side note, this doesn't justify don't caring about the other person. If they want to come to enjoy it you should help them too. Almost every gender specific myth. Like that men always want sex. Vaginal versus clitoridian orgasm. Shut up Sigmund for God's sake. Clitoridian is 100 point symbol. An 80s exploitation sci-fi comedy alien race name. Maybe not the answer you're looking for but here's a biggie. The disturbing logic that if somebody orgasms during a sexual assault. It's consensual. It's not. That you have to have sex for a decent life. Look. That may be the case for you. But some are better off without it and that's okay. The concept of the hymen being an indicator of virginity or sexual behavior. Absolute BS. Me getting laid. That's just absurd. They told me I'd have sex when I grow up. The funny part is that I trusted them. Guys don't need to be touched during foreplay. You should be hard only by just looking at me. When you come early she'll be annoyed. You can't be a porn star all the time. Sometimes you come early. Sometimes you won't come at all. Sometimes you have trouble getting a boner and sometimes you'll fuck her for an hour. It's normal. Come early. I'll take it as a compliment that you were just so turned on by me. Then we can do other things. Sex isn't just piv. Not myth but I hate TV and movie representation of it. After fucking. They just stay in bed. If you're wearing. Your wee wee is shriveled with sack of nasty juice. If not. Dude. There's probably jizz getting all over sheets and perhaps now soaking in the mattress. Fuck I'm way too late to the party. But anyways. Hot showers don't cook the proteins in cum. Most guys will have experience with the phenomenon that cum coagulates when rinsing it in a hot shower. A lot of people seem to think that's because the hot water cooks the sperm. Like an egg. If it's hot enough to cook the sperm. It's hot enough to cook your skin as well. Why anyone believes this is beyond me and for some reason it really bothers me. Most proteins. As do eggs, only start actual cooking at around 60 C or more. Sperm has natural coagulants which are inhibited by the pH of the seminal fluid and certain enzymes. Warm water is very good at washing away the pH increasing compounds and enzymes which causes rapid coagulation. It doesn't cook your sperm. An unexpected till but a welcome one for sure. What the average dick size really is. 
Most men I've been with have been self-conscious if they fall below the 7 stroke 8 inch mark when the average is around 5 and doesn't indicate how good the sex will be at all. That a man inserting his penis into a woman and then laying there while someone jumps on the bed to make it go in and out isn't considered sex. Mormon jump humping cracks me up. The pee is stored in the balls. That is all. What's the bladder for though? Is it like an intermediary chamber for the pee to drip and then go to the balls? After reading a lot of these responses, all I can think is that the public education system has failed us all. That women don't understand that condoms don't feel good. I'm a woman. I don't like the way condoms feel either. Nor do I like the aftertaste. However you have to do what you have to do. I didn't know vaginas had taste buds. If you do X you are always ready for sex. Sex is serious and you can't laugh at all. Sex is only fulfilling if you have an orgasm. I had to stop one time because we were doing a position where I was sat up but I just could not keep my balance for the life of me. The giggle fit was fun though. And when we went back to sex, we kept making jokes about it. Sometimes goofy sex is just what happens. The first time is perfect with roses and candles. One size fits all. In terms of condoms, it does not. Getting a proper fitting condom depending on the size of your dick can make sex many more times enjoyable. Also magnums are usually the same size and diameter compared to a normal condom. They are usually just larger lengthwise with a wider tip. Lastly for the larger endowed men. Remember lube and foreplay go a long way when getting your partner warmed up for sex. Don't try to just shove it in. It's not going to happen.